All right, so we'll start with recording format. What's a recording format? Recording format is a combination of various things you can set in the Alexa. It's the sensor mode, it's the recording resolution, what file type you use. And the Alexa XT with software 11. So we're moving a little into the future now. We're assuming it's January 2015. Alexa XT with software 11 will have 23 different recording formats. Now this is fantastic for the rental house because it means they can supply anything. Any kind of show, the Alexa will be able to handle it with one of these formats. On the other hand, you know, there, there's a slight op opportunity for a little bit of confusion there. You know, what do you use all these formats for? What are they there for? Um, so I'll try to answer that here today. Now, what we're not doing here right now is we're not doing a comprehensive, technical, in-depth science, pixel math, color science. We're not doing that. Rather, I'd like to talk about what the formats are um, and how the most frequent use of these formats I've seen in the fields. I go visit a lot of sets. I talk to post people. Henning and I, we talk a lot. And we see some recording formats being used a lot for certain applications and some being used a little. So I'm going to try to convey that to you here. Um, almost all this info is on the website, except, of course, for the ProRes, uh, Pro, ProRes 3.2K stuff, the, the software 11 stuff. Everything else is on the website. And I can't remember this stuff, so I had to actually dig it out from the website. So you don't have to actually write this down. Um, we're seeing a lot of mixing and matching. In fact, I mentioned Game of Thrones. They're shooting HDSDI, JPEG 2000, 3 to 1 compression. But for their visual effects sequences, they're shooting Arri Raw. So people will mix and match all these recording formats. And as I mentioned earlier, there's been a significant increase in the use of Arri Raw since 11. Now, with all these things, um, there's no free lunch. So if you want a larger sensor area, means higher data rate. That's gonna, that, when that probably means lower frames per second, higher cost. If you use lower <laughs> compression, higher image quality, but again, higher data rate, also higher cost. There's no free lunch. You always, you always lose something. Um, terminology. I like to distinguish between photo sites and pixels. A photo site to me is a light sensitive area on the sensor, and a pixel is a picture element that a file consists of. And I think a lot of the confusion uh, that reigns in the industry comes from people confusing that. There's a difference between the actual light sensitive areas we have on the sensor and how many pixels you actually record in your file. And last but not least, the new recording formats, I've listed them, I have them in the, the um, whole structure, but of course we don't know how many people are going to use them for what, so we can only make guesses there. Um, the most often used formats will be in dark orange, and the less frequently used formats will be in light orange. All right, let's dig into it. We're starting with a clean, clean canvas here, totally white. My boss will hate it. He always loves it when I have the Airy logo on this, but I needed all the space. And the first thing I have is what do people want? People want to shoot high-definition television series, ultra-high definition, 2K, 4K features, and commercials. And then the next thing you have to look at is, well, what kind of lenses do they use? They use spherical and anamorphic lenses. All right, and then you come to some meeting at the beginning of a show where the post-production supervisor says, well, what's the recording format you set in the Alexa? And here are your daunting choices. As of software 11, these are all the choices, and we'll go through them. So let's, so we're going to switch a little bit into mode. We're going to switch to the green explanation mode. I came up with this yesterday night. Green explanation mode. So first, let's look at the sensor mode. The first part of the recording format is the sensor mode. And there we have three options, 16 by 9, 4 by 3, and open gate. Now what this actually does is it tells you the aspect ratio of the area you use on the sensor. It doesn't actually define how many photo sites, but it tells you the aspect ratio ratio. 16 by 9 clearly is 16 by 9, 1.78 to 1. 4 by 3 is this exact same area that we used to have on 35 millimeter film, 1.33 to 1. And then open gate is 1.5 to 1. That's the whole sensor. Every photo site we have in the Alexa is actually being used. So that's your sensor mode. Second, you have record. And there are three different recording First, there's ProRes, probably the most popular recording format with the Alexa. ProRes is a compressed format. It's designed by Apple. It's the native codec for Final Cut Pro. And when we record ProRes, we debayer the image in the camera, and we bake in the white balance and the exposure index. Though all those things get baked in. They're permanently in the image then. 
All right, second option we have is DNxHD. Again, it's a compressed format. It's the native format used for Avid Media Composer. And again, it's being debired in camera, white billings, exposure index are baked in. And then last but not least, we have Arri Raw, which is getting more popular. It's uh, totally uncompressed. It's unencrypted, which is important because that means that in the future, you can actually get at Arri Raw images and do your own debayering. It's a very standard debayering that we have. There's no, no secret sauce in there. It's the highest quality of the Alexa output, gives you the most flexibility in post because nothing is baked in. You choose white balance exposure index in post. You don't choose that while you're shooting. You can choose it while you're shooting and that will get transported as metadata as a recommendation, but it's not baked in. And last, it's the best archival op um, option. As debayering gets better and better, you can always go back to your area raw footage and use the better newer debayer on your existing area raw footage and then my colleague Henning and some of his people have done what's called a SEMPTI RDD. And I don't remember what RDD stands for. I have a guess. What, what, what does it stand for? It says registered disclosure document. Registered disclosure. All right. But what, what is this registered disclosure document? What this means is that we're actually disclosing how ARRI RAW works. And this is now with the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. By the way, the first time I heard that word was in a Frank Zappa song called Lady Snakes. He actually mentions the SEMPTI in there. Anyway, so those are the recording file types. And then you can choose for some of these recording file types different recording resolutions. This is actually how many pixels do you have in your file. And there we have a number of options, HD 2K, 2.6K, 2.8K, 3.2K, and 3.4K. These are the actual pixels, um, the horizontal pixels. That's what this is. And you may notice something that the 2.8K is not properly rounded up, but that's how we started, and I wanted to change it to 2.9K, and so many people screamed, says, no, we can't do that, we can't do that. So I'm afraid there's this minor inconsistency, which bugs me to no end, but we're, we're gonna stick with that. So those are the, is the recording resolution. And then we come to the recording file setting, and what that actually does is it determines how highly is the image compressed, which means what's the data rate that comes out of it. And in the old film days, if you wanted to know how expensive your film was, you, you just made the choice. You shoot on Super 8, 16, 35, or 65 millimeter film. Well, these days, the film gauge has been replaced by the data rate. Data rate is very, very important because it directly affects the cost of post-production. It affects how long does it take to copy things on the set, how long does it take to archive things, how long does it take to do your dailies, how much do the, does the post-production host charge you. Data rate is money. So the recording file setting determines the data rate. All right, we're going out of the green teaching mode, back to our roster here. Delivery format, lens type, recording setting. Now this recording setting will result in some number of photo sites on the sensor. It'll result in some number of recorded pixels. And that's then your final file that you record. And then that goes through post-production. And if you're lucky, at the end, you get what you wanted to begin with. All right, so this is the setup. Now let's go through the setup and look at some different applications. We're starting with high definition television series, and I've divided this here as one, one recording setting that almost everybody uses, and there are two that are used but not so frequently. All right, we're back to our canvas, and here now comes high definition television series. High definition television series. Almost all of them shoot with spherical. I know very, actually I know one, there was a D20 anamorphic show shot in Australia about people being stranded away from Earth, but I think that was about it. Almost nothing done in anamorphic. They shoot 16 by nine, ProRes, high definition, four by four. How much of it will be four by four XQ, we'll see once um, XQ is out. What this means is they're using 2880 by 1620 photo sites on the sensor which gets downscaled in the camera to 1920 by 1080. ProRes 4x4 is an RGB codec, and then that goes into post. So this is, I would say, what 80% of everything done with the Alexa goes to this kind of a workflow. Those are the choices they make. This is the most popular. Now, this is um, Elementary, a British show, one of those Sherlock Holmes show with Lucy Liu, that actually is Lucy Liu. Um, she's the site, she's Holmes, she plays uh, uh, Watson. No, she plays Watson. She doesn't play Holmes, she plays Watson. Um, they just recently got some awards. They're shooting that way. This is Downton Abbey, very, very popular. My wife loves that. 
um, that is using that workflow. And uh, just a ton of television shows, there's 140 television shows being done in the US. And I think by now we have an 85% market share for those television shows with the Alexa. And they all use that workflow. Now, slightly lighter orange, kind of looks pinkish here. Um, this is a workflow that's used, but not very frequently. Same thing, Circle, 69 ProRes HD, but using one of the lesser codecs, higher compression ratio, thus lower data rate. Um, what you get, 2880 by 1620, 1920 by 1080 file, ProRes YCBCR. So you're actually using a slightly different encoding, color encoding scheme for these codecs than you would for ProRes 4x4. But if you don't have the money, you want to reduce your data rate, that's the way to go, and people do, do it. Also done, but not so frequently, is this. Shooting 16 by 9 spherical lenses, recording in DNX HD, high definition, and there 220X is the most popular codec. This gets you 280 by 1620 file, 1920 by 1080, DNX HD, YCBCR, goes into post-production. Um, I was visiting a set here, this is a photo taken with my old iPhone, not so pretty photo, of an ABC family television show called The Fosters. It's one of those teeny shows that comes on Saturday morning in the US. And Disney has set up, they're actually doing five or six shows this way. They set up a workflow where they record the NXHD 220X, give it to the editors, they put a lookup table on top of it that the DIT built for them. Um, they edit, they do a final color correction, and off they go. There's no online, there's no offline. It, it's a very simple, very streamlined workflow that allows them to pump a lot of material through for relatively low costs. So DNX HD is actually being used, but as I said, not as often as ProRes. Okay, now we, we're in speculation land because we haven't come out with ProRes 3.2K, but once we will, I think this is what's gonna happen. UHD television series, shoot spherical lenses, 16 by 9 ProRes 3.2K, and then I think they're gonna choose either 4x4, because it has really, really good quality, or 4 to 2 hq because 3.2K 4x4 is, of course, a higher data rate. It's 700 megabits per second. That might be too much for some television series. 4 to 2 hq is an excellent codec, and I think some people may use that for the lower data rate at the higher resolution. So here we have a larger area of the sensor we're recording, and then in case of ProRes um, 4x4, you get an RGB image. 4 to 2 hq you get YCBCR. And off you go into post-production. So that's the option for UHD television show. Now we're going to the 2K features. There's two workflows I've seen, four that I've also seen but not so frequently, starting with 2K feature, spherical lens, 16 by 9, Airy raw 2K, use everything. This gets you 2880 by 1620 on the sensor into a 2880 by 1620 every raw file, which then is being debayered in post-production. This is how most feature films are being shot right now, including um, Roger Deakins shot Skyfall that way. Roger Deakins, I believe, shot Unbroken, the new film with Angelina Jolie that way. Um, and here's Roger Deakins with an Alexa XT. I just love that you can see the XT. You know, I'm the one who looks at the XT logo. I uh, actually when we had the first 416 out there. I went to visit a set in Paris um, that was shooting with a, one of the first 416s. And I came on the set and I asked them if it would be possible to take some photos. They said, oh, no, 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 you know, Iris Berben, she, she just broke up with a boyfriend. She doesn't look so good. She's not, she doesn't. And, and I said, I don't want to take a picture of Iris Berben. I want to take a picture of the camera. It's camera porn. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Audrey Deakins. Now, if you're shooting a 2K feature in spherical, there's another workflow that's being used. Gentlemen, would you mind, if you want to talk, you can talk, but do it outside, please. Sorry. It's okay. So there's another workflow that's being used for spherical lenses. Some people shoot 4x3, Airy Raw, 2.8K, full. This is what you get. Let's briefly go back. So this is Airy Raw 16x9. This is the area for Airy Raw 16x9. And then for 4x3, it doesn't get any wider, but it gets taller using the whole height of the sensor. You get the same Airy Raw out of it. And then I've drawn the 16x9 in here because people use it for spherical shows, so they're using 185 or 16 by 9, but they use the extra room to place markers, special effects markers, 
for some of the special effects movies, that's become a very, very popular way to go, to place the special effects markers here on the top. The other uh, option that I've seen some movies do, I believe Drive was done that way, is people, for feature films, they shoot ProRes 2K 4x4, gets them this pixel count, gets them a ProRes RGB file into post, make your 2K feature. It's a way some people have gone, not that many, but it's also something we've seen. Well, many European films. Many Europeans, true enough. Many European films go that way. Because the image quality is spectacular. It looks really, really good. And um, of course, it costs less than, every, than going every raw. Next, anamorphic. You want to shoot anamorphic lenses? Well, three, four by three, every raw. You shoot. This is what you get: 2880 by 2160. And then this is what you, the file you record. Now I've drawn in the area of what you actually need for an anamorphic lens. Your final result is 2.39 to 1. Let's just round that up and say 2.4 to 1. That's your cinema scope frame area. The anamorphic lens squeezes by a factor of 2. So what you end up with on the sensor is 1.2 to 1. The 1.2 to 1 is this little bit here. That's what you actually need. You get a little more wiggle room on the side here, which might be nice for repositioning. Um, quite frankly, though, we introduced 4x3 because that's what the film cameras used to do. And we ran into a little issue that with this format, we can go up to 90 frames a second. That's the limit. That's the limit of the data rate. Now, DPs like to think in multiples of 24. That's how their mind works. So we had a number of people who says, well, we'd like to shoot 96 frames a second with anamorphic lenses. And we said, hmm, what could we do? And the only way to reduce the data rate is using fewer photosites from the sensor. Oh, sorry. So this, this is one of feature film that's being shot with mass anamorphics right now using 4x3, 2.8K. Uh, it's a Belgian feature film. I think the lighting is just lovely. OK, but what, some, what we did then is we came up with another Arri Roth 4x3 format, which is called cropped which uses exact only the photosites that the anamorphic lens needs. So this is a 1.2 to 1 aspect ratio. If we go back quickly. So this is the 4 by 3 full. And then here's 4 by 3 cropped. Just what the lens needs. And that gets you up to 96 frames a second. Your option. Either you have a little more wiggle room, 90 frames a second max, or you don't have any wiggle room, but you shoot up to 96 frames a second. Which brings me to. Anamorphic lenses, 4x3, ProRes 2K, ProRes 4x4, 444. Uh, 4, 4. People also use that for 2K features. Now we're coming to three, 4K features, and there are, there are three workflows I've seen, and two I haven't seen so often. The first one is exactly the same one as for a 2K feature. Shoot spherical lens, 16x9, Arri Raw, 2.8K. These are the pixels you have on the sensor. These are the pixels you record in the every raw file. Go into post, blow it up to 4K. Looks spectacular. The latest Bond was done that way, Skyfall. If you've seen that, if you've seen that on a 4K projector, they have even did an IMAX version. It looks just spectacular. A lot of movies are being done this way uh, currently, and it works just fine. The second, so here's Mr. Deacons shooting Bond with an Alexa Studio. The second way that I've seen now is since we have open gate, a lot of people are shooting open gate, Arri Raw 3.4, which is the whole sensor, every photo site we have, goes into an Arri Raw file. And I've drawn 16 by 9 in here. So you can see you can also now have some space for putting your visual effects markers on the top and the bottom. Um, I'm seeing this also for people who want to shoot spherical lenses for a 2.4 to 1 for CinemaScope, who don't use anamorphic lenses but use spherical lenses. They, of course, then have a you know, wider area on, in here. That's one of the most popular uses of OpenGate. But also, if you want to shoot something that's 185, people like that. And then when you up res to 4K, of course, it's slightly better to go from 3.4K to 4K than to go from 2.8K to 4K. What I haven't seen that often, but sometimes, is people who shoot, again, 4x3, every raw, and then they use the top and the bottom portions for visual effects markers. Which brings me to anamorphic lenses. There, it's kind of the same thing. Anamorphic 4x3, every raw, 2.8K going there. And then you have the option of going with 
And this is a movie that's been shot that way. Anamorphic lenses, 4x3, Airy Raw, 2.8K. This is John Wick, post-production done by Light Iron in Los Angeles, Michael Cioni. And they actually did the whole post-production in 3K. So they took the 2880 by 2160 <laughs> and they did their whole post-production in 3K and at the very end bumped it up to 4K. The advantage is you don't incur the cost that you have of having to post-produce in 4K. 4K is still very, very expensive to do production. Most people try to avoid it if they can. So this is one way of going. This is what Michael Cioni did. And then less frequently, I see people who switch to the crop mode to get the 96 frames a second. All right, we're almost done. You're not asleep. I'm very, very impressed. Commercials. And here I have actually found the infinity symbol on my Mac. Um, anything goes. This is a commercial uh, done by Bill Bennett up in the mountains of Montana. But this is what happens. It, people do everything in commercials. They do 4x3, they do 16x9, ProRes, Airy Raw, they mix and match. It's crazy. I, you know, I was looking and I was thinking, should I, puzzle, you know, should I try to make this? And I thought, you know, pe people will just die if I tried every single commercial we've seen. You could, you could add on the pixels. So it would be a lot of pixels. It, it would be a lot of pixels, yeah. I mean, it, it's a whole mess. Anything goes with commercials, um, which is great. You know, they're, they're very creative. They do a lot of stuff and they try out new formats. So I think probably we're gonna see, see 3.2K in commercials. Um, haven't seen a lot of DNX in commercials, and I haven't seen any 2.6K, but that will come out, I think, middle of next week, so it's no wonder we haven't seen that yet. And I apologize to our colleagues who shoot nature, who shoot nature documentaries. Here's a gentleman who shot uh, his lifelong dream, well, he isn't that old, but as long as he's lived, he's had this dream to shoot musk oxen in Norway during a snowstorm. I dream of windsurfing in Hawaii. He has his dream. You know, different people do different things. And he actually did get his dream. He owns his own Alexa. And he shot it. And the camera actually ran. It worked. It was fine. It did well. Um, it's a crazy man, but he sends me beautiful pictures from the camera on the set. So I apologize to all the nature photographers. I don't have them in this setting. And I also apologize to all the music videos. This is a music video that was being shot with an Alexa studio, believe it or not, shooting Airy Raw in one of the largest underwater studios in Brussels. So I apologize to the music video guys. I haven't listed them either because they also do all kinds of different things. Um, I would have liked to show you the Airy Raw for all budgets. Um, showreel right now, but we're having technical difficulty. If you can come to the end tomorrow of uh, my presentation, maybe then we can show you that. And that's it for my presentation. Any questions?